So on today's episode, we're going to go over the Hungry Bin, which is a vermicompost bin. I'm going to show you how this is set up. I'm going to show you how I fill my vermicompost bin with my compost that I have here and also some carbon resource, which is going to help create a more fungally dominant vermicompost bin, which will give us access to really good worm castings that has a really good one-to-one -one ratio between bacteria and fungi. So let's take a look at our ingredients. So first here, we do have our compost, which our compost is a the compost that we made from our video that I'll link uh, in the description as well as up here in the top corner. And you guys can check that out, how I had that recipe as well as the thermophilic cooking process to making this compost. And then I'll also show you guys what it looks like under the microscope to signify what biocomplete compost means and all of the organisms involved that makes it biocomplete. So setting up is really simple. All you have to do is attach your legs and your wheels. Go ahead and attach the upper bin to the lower bin. Put your mesh screen in the bottom and attach your catch tray down to the bottom of that and then you have your drip pan underneath it. Super easy setup to set up this hungry bin. So this bin is a flow through worm bin. What that means is, is that most typical worm bins uh, you have to take your trays and you have to move them around to get your castings toward the bottom. This is more or less build it and leave it. And over the course of a few months, you're going to get your castings from underneath the bottom. And those castings are not only rich in organic material and fertilizer, but also rich in biology, which is what we're trying to add to any of our garden systems to create better life and nutrient cycling within the soil, which helps plants grow. Now that whole ratio that we're looking for with the fungal to bacteria ratio, the dominance of that is depending on the succession of kinds of plants we're gonna grow. We're aiming for a one-to-one -one because we're gonna use this for most of our row crops outside for all our fruits and vegetables that we plan on growing in our garden beds. Now, if I were making something for trees, I'd want to go on a further successional ratio, higher in fungal biomass, in order to achieve something that's better for trees. We'll take a look at what's under the microscope in a, a set of our compost here, and you guys can see really what's going on, and we'll kind of explain who is who inside a single drop of our test sample for specifically looking at what kind of organisms are in this compost. Now this compost has been aging inside of our 50 gallon bin for a few months now. And it's really, really getting really good color and texture. The great thing about compost, really biologically complete compost, is that this retains a ton of water. I put some water in there when I originally set up this 50 gallon bin and I haven't done anything since. And it is still quite heavy and wet. Uh, which is retaining moisture and that has a lot to do with the organisms involved in holding that moisture because organisms themselves are three-quarter percent mostly water so they really do a good job of holding water in that organic material to keep it from drying out one of the advantages of having organisms in your soil to help with drought resistance so let's go ahead and pour this in Now when they recommend filling this hungry bin, they recommend filling it about three quarters of the way full to initially get your worm started. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to about this line here, which gives us enough room for the worms to get comfortable throughout the compost, as well as giving us the ability to add more on top of it as the worms start digesting what's inside the bin. Next component I'm gonna add is our woody material, which I use the wood chipper, and I recycled a whole bunch of cardboard boxes that we had lying around the garage just to recycle some carbon material we had locally. So I don't have to go buy anything to add to this compost in order to create a higher fungal dominance. Fungi likes carbon material. That is their main food source. Bacteria like mainly more nitrogen materials. So your greens, your food scraps, those kinds of things. 
So if you're going to add more of your high nitrogen material, that's going to increase your bacterial populations. You add more carbon, that's food for your fungal populations. So when you're adding food to this bin, greens, high nitrogen, your food scraps, you want to exclude meats typically because those won't typically break down inside this bin that fast and they'll end up rotting. You can uh, add that to a static pile and you can make uh, compost. You can compost your meats and dairies and those kinds of things in a static pile and then you can add it to biocomplete compost which will help balance out the organisms within it but you kind of want to keep those separate. So for this, as I mentioned, your bacteria feeds off of your nitrogen, your greens mainly, and your fungi feeds off of carbon. So we're going to add just this carbon resource to our bin just to kind of create more fungal dominance. And we'll show you that under the microscope and you'll be able to see what the fungal spores look like that we're going to try to germinate using this carbon material to create a more fungal dominant vermicompost. Now I'm adding my brown material not because I want all fungal dominant vermicompost. I want to create conditions that are right for that those fungal spores to germinate and start creating strands and really start aggregating the majority of the material. And so I'm not saying that, that you shouldn't add green materials because you do, because you do want a good population and biomass bacteria and their predatory species like nematodes and protozoa. So after we get done adding some carbon material to this and putting a little water in, we're also going to add some green material on the top and we're still going to start feeding the worms um, a good amount because there is a lot of wood chips in this compost. So there is a lot of food already. The chipped up cardboard is more or less a, an additional food source that's easy, easy to break down because it's fiber. It's not necessarily pieces of wood that have to be further broken down. So it's a little bit easier food to essentially break down for the fungal strains within the compost. So that's why I'm adding it here to give the fungi a bit of a boost so that they start populating this bin faster and then we can start inducing more population growth for bacteria and their predatory species after we get the worms in here. So good compost, you can tell by two different things in compost, just if you really don't know how to look at anything under a microscope, there's two big key factors that help with determining what's good compost and not so good compost. Uh, one is color. You want it to be a, like a 70% dark chocolate in color. You don't want it black, you don't want it light brown. The main reason why that is is because humic acids are a dark brown color. And the production of humic acids means that you have a lot of fungal foods that are within your compost. So that's one good thing to look out for. The second thing to look out for is you want to make sure that your compost doesn't stink. It doesn't smell like ammonia. It doesn't have like a, a rotting smell or anything like that. You want it to smell like, like you're exploring through the forest and digging through the forest and that real nice earthy forest floor smell in order to determine whether it's good or not. So those are some really easy ways to determine whether you have good compost or not is color and smell. All right, get the rest of our compost in. And a good way to understand how to know how wet your compost is, is by doing what's called a field capacity test. And the easiest way to explain that is basically balling it up, taking your compost and squeezing it and seeing how much water you can get out of it. By squeezing it, do I have any drips coming out? I don't. But you see how it's kind of aggregating together and staying into a solid clump? That's a good sign. So that means we're about 40% moisture in this. If I were to get a, maybe one drop out of my hand, that's about 50% moisture. For worms, in a worm bin, you want about 70% moisture, which is about two or three drops coming out of your hand and dripping out. If you have multiple drops dripping out when you squeeze it, that's closer to 100% and that's too wet. That'll go anaerobic. Now you'll know when a bin goes anaerobic because when it has too much water or there's too much food that the worms can't get to fast enough, you'll end up with fungus gnats on top and it may start to smell. So you want to back off the food or you want to back off the water and let it dry out a little bit and then test that field capacity again. Make sure you're at 70% or as close to 70%, which is one or two drops coming out from your knuckles 
and that's a great place to be, which is comfortable for the worms. If it's too anaerobic, the worms won't want to be there. Worms are aerobic creatures and they like to be in aerobic environment. The slime on the outside of a worm is aerobic. And so anything that the worm touches, consumes, goes through, ends up being just that much better. If you have mediocre compost, you put your compost in here, the worms do their job. They actually complete the cycle and make really, really good aerobic vermicompost. All right, our bin is nearly full. And as you can see, really good compost. The moisture level is just about right. We're gonna add a little bit of humic acid water to make sure that we get the right moisture content inside our vermicompost bin. Uh, we're going to add our worms in and we're going to let them do their thing for the next few months. And after about three or four months, we should start seeing worm castings down in the bottom of our, of our bin. If you enjoyed today's video, smash that like button and subscribe because there's much more coming this season. Thanks everyone for watching and we'll see you in the next one.